Okay, so I was actually just in the process of building this antenna and I figured, hey, it's been a little while since I did a video, so why not do a video and help you out here. So what this is going to be is this is going to be an antenna to get on the air channels um, using just an antenna. It's kind of, I'm trying to lean more towards the cable cutting, um, get away from the cable. I'm being charged $200 a month for cable and I just feel like it's ridiculous for the amount of TV that I watch and the content that I do watch on that TV. I don't find that I'm really getting my money's worth. So uh, there's tons of HD antennas on the internet. Um, I did a ton of research just to decide what I wanted and what I thought works the best. Uh, you're never going to please everybody. You're always going to have naysayers. Some people are going to say this version is better than that one. Go with a fractal and blah, blah, blah and use this different material. So I did a lot of research and I kind of pieced together what I feel like is the best part of all the antennas that I found. Um, and it's very simple to make. I'll show you kind of what we got here. So this is just a 2x4. I had it sitting in the attic. You can tell it's all kind of messed up. Um, and this one's about 29 inches long. And just from the research that I've done, it shows uh, there was so many different theories on how far apart everything should be and what the length of the board should be and blah, blah, blah. So you can do your own research or you could just go based off of what I found. What I found works the best is four inches from the top, which actually there's not a lot of information that says that you really even need the four inches from the top. You could honestly probably put uh, the dipoles right at the top. The biggest... Um, the biggest factor here is the length in between them, as well as the length in between the ends of the dipole, which I'll show you. So anyways, four inches from the top, notice I made two little marks just with the permanent markers, and they're two inches apart. Uh, the length or the distance that it is from the edge doesn't really matter. What matters the most is how far apart they are and the distance in between them. So they're about two inches apart here. I think it comes out to about an inch and a half. No, actually, sorry, a half an inch maybe a little more than a half inch on each side. From there, you're gonna measure seven inches down, and this is gonna be your second dipole. And then from there, you're gonna measure seven inches down again, it's gonna be another one. And then finally, seven inches down, it's gonna be the last dipole, the last set of dipoles. Now you're probably wondering what these two marks in the middle are. And what that is for is for probably the most important thing um, the thing that you need 110%, like a lot of the other materials, you can substitute something else, you can go with what you want, but this is kind of something that you need for every antenna, and it's a TV matching transformer. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to take the signal from the antenna and turn it into something that you can connect coax cable to, which is RG6 cable, just regular, when you think of a cable that you plug in the back of the TV, that's what it is. So that you definitely need this. I got this from two from Walmart for about two dollars and eighty five cents. It was a site to store uh, type of thing. You can buy it online, but I've seen them online for upwards of twenty dollars. You don't need this. You don't need to spend that much. This is two dollars. You need some wood screws. Got these from Walmart as well. Some washers, and then this part is very a very hot topic when it comes to. Um, debating on what materials to use for the antenna. And I'm just going to use their regular wire hangers. Uh, I had these actually sitting around in my closet, but when I ran to Walmart, just for the sake of pricing everything out to get the screws and the washers and whatnot, I looked at the prices and they're $1.24 for 10 or 12 of these things. So they're super, super cheap. Uh, if you don't want to use hangers, you could actually just use regular old bare copper wire if you have that laying around or um, just wire in general. The only difference is going to be how you connect them uh, to the, um, the washers and the screws. You know, like if you use regular wire, you're probably going to have to use the little loop connectors and you're going to have to crimp them on because otherwise the wire is going to slip out. So I'm going to use these. One of the things you want to make sure, uh, obviously you want to make sure it's a metal coat hanger, which this is. Good luck finding a copper coat hanger because the price of copper is so high that it's very, very difficult and it's not going to be cheap. The whole point of this is doing this the cheapest way possible. And to be honest, I'm doing this more of as a proof of concept. Um, if this works really well, I'm going to definitely scale it up and build something a lot larger and probably two or three of these. If you look at uh, kind of the pro antennas, if you want to call them, um, they're all copying these designs. Like the manufacturers are copying these designs. And the reason why is because they work. You know, it works very, very well. Uh, so anyways, getting back to this. So this is the hanger. Um, it is a metal hanger, however, if you look, 
it's coated with some sort of plastic. So we're gonna have to get that coating off before we use these. Not really sure how hard it's gonna be. I tried kind of getting it off, and I was like, oh man, this is gonna suck. I might try heating it up, see if it'll soften it, make it a little easier. I don't know, I guess we'll have to see. Um, even if you have the ones that don't have this plastic coating, you still want to heat it up because some people say that there's some sort of protective covering over the metal. It's like uh, oil or some sort, um, and it really interferes with the signal. So you need that, uh, something to cut the hangers, and you've got garden shears. Like I said, I'm just, just stuff that I had laying around except for obviously these parts. So I'm just trying to not spend any money on any new tools or anything. So just something to cut the hanger. I'm going to try garden shears if I have to. Something to shape the hanger. And obviously a drill. You don't even need the drill, honestly. Um, if you don't have a drill, I wouldn't advise going out and spending thirty to forty dollars on a cheap drill. Uh, just, they're wood screws. Use a screwdriver. Screw them into the wood. So right now, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna drill the holes, and I'm gonna attempt to get as much of this coating off as I can, and then we'll come back and see where we're at. Okay, so now that we've done that. Um, I'm sure right about now you are hating coat hangers. I will say it was definitely a lot harder than I thought to cut the coat hangers. Um, I found that the wire cutters did absolutely nothing and what actually worked the best was garden shears. The garden shears worked the best. You can see that it took like chunks out of it. It was definitely a chore um, to cut up the hangers. So you needed to cut about six hangers because you need uh, eight dipoles and two of these to run all the connections kind of just down the length of the board. What you do when you have the hanger, cut here, cut here, and it'll give you two halves that are about even length. Um, so then you cut right in the middle, and then you get these die poles. And then for these, all you do is you cut this off, cut this off, and straighten it out. Uh, now, like I said, these were covered in some sort of insulator, probably to protect clothing and whatnot. Uh, it's a hard plastic insulator. I tried using a knife, it didn't come off very well. I tried uh, using the garden shears to kind of cut around in a circle and peel it off. It didn't work well. What did work very well, it still so took some time. I mean, it probably took about half an hour to take all the insulation off of all these. And to some people, that's not a lot, but I hate mundane tasks. And to me, it was very mundane and it was very annoying. Um, but what worked very well was I used my butane torch. Let me get it to light up. Uh, every hobbyist should own one of these. This is actually like a three-in-one. It's a torch, it's a heat gun, and it's also a soldering iron. Very, very handy to have around. Uh, so I used my heat gun, or my butane torch, I should say, and I just heat up the plastic insulation, and then using the garden shears, it would leave the... I was able to easily peel it off. It was definitely quite easy, but the butane torch does get the hanger very, very hot because you got to remember there's metal on the inside. That's what we're after is the metal. So you got to be careful. Make sure you don't get burned. Um, definitely don't advise. I was originally going to make this something that my four-year-old could help out with uh, so she likes to do the mundane tasks and I don't. Uh, but when you're using heat, obviously you don't want to involve kids. But anyways, we got what we needed. So we have eight of these. And essentially, the plan is to use these kind of like this. I'll show you obviously the finished product when it's done. But we're gonna lay these out. And I know, like I said before, um, you'll find different measurements all over the internet. Some people say this should be spaced five and a quarter inches out. Some people say it should be nine inches. It really just depends on you. Find what works best for you. Um, but at the end of the day, it's just a piece of wood you know that's the if that's the problem it's the gaps that uh you find aren't working for you, you need to change it it's just a piece of wood you can still reuse these same pieces so you're not really wasting anything other than a piece of wood and actually if you're going smaller like for example if i decided to go with uh two inches from the top five and one quarter inches i'd still be able to use this exact same piece of wood i just have to put more holes in it so essentially this is the plan it's gonna go like this and then we are going to use Two of these on either side to kind of link up the connections um, and so the measurements are going to be you have to make sure that the ends of these are even and when you cut them you're going to notice that they're not really even so the best thing to do i would say would be to flatten this out because you can see it's not completely even on both sides flatten this out and then snip it so it's even um, I'm gonna do that, and they recommend that it should some people, I'm going with about eight inches, it's supposed to be about eight inches, so 
you know, we definitely have some room to work with from about here to here. It's about eight inches. So if I straighten it out, it might actually be, oh, let's see this one here. If I straighten it out, it might actually be even. And then you want to make sure the gap is about four inches. Uh, another important thing is people say make sure that they're all very level, very flat. Uh, and these are things that you can play around with, you can mess around with. Once you screw it in, it's not set in stone forever. Uh, so just I'm just going to make an initial one and kind of fine tune it as I need to. Um, another thing that you can do that I've seen some people do, which depending on my reception and depending on how well this works out, I might try, is add a foil backing on the back to kind of capture st uh, the signal better. Some people have used uh, chicken wire, but I'm just going to try foil. I'm trying to just do this with whatever I have laying around the house, with the exception of the hardware. And honestly, I did have hardware laying around, but I just kind of wanted new stuff, stuff that I know wasn't corroded and just stuff that I know would fit well together, just so I'm not getting frustrated uh, trying to fit things together. This is really the only thing that you have to buy. All right, so we're going to put it all together and I will come back and show you kind of how I wired things up here. Okay, so I had a rush towards the end here because it's getting kind of late and I got to leave for work in about an hour and I hate leaving projects unfinished. So just kind of snapped it all together as quick as I could. If you notice, there's some areas that do need some refinement, like I got to trim that off there. Um, I did hit a couple of roadblocks, you know, and it's going to happen when you, um, whenever you do any project, sometimes you hit roadblocks. The first one was this, uh, actually this one right here, uh, the screw lost its bite in the wood, so I had to move it over just a little bit. You know, and like I said, this is more of a proof of concept to me, just trying to see what can these kind of antennas do. I'm definitely going to build another one, a better one, probably a bigger one if I like what this can do. So this was just more of a proof of concept, and because it was so cheap, it wasn't really too big of a deal. Um, but like I said, I did hit a couple roadblocks, so this was number one. I had to offset it a little bit, so I'm kind of curious to see um, what kind of results that'll give me. Like, will it change anything? You know, will it completely make the antenna useless because it's offset a little bit? I really don't think so, but... Who knows? Um, another little snafu that I hit is when I was attaching the transformers, um, these wood screws here, the transformer, these wood screws here have a very large gap at the top here that has no threads. And the problem with that was is because it's um, a blade connector, it's very, very flat and there was just way too much wiggle room here so it wouldn't secure it. So I did change it out for a wood screws I had in the basement that have threads running uh, the entire length of the screw so I'll be able to I'm able to screw it down to the very very bottom and make that nice and secure so that's on there uh, one modification I forgot to add which I just realized that I am gonna add is at the crossover points I'm gonna put electrical tape to prevent interference so here and then down here I'm gonna put some electrical tape I'm probably gonna put some electrical tape around this to after I connect the coax uh, just to kind of prevent interference so I am now going to put the electrical tape on and hook this up to the TV with the little bit of time I have left and see what kind of results that I get and I'll definitely come back and show you. Okay, so just finished the scan and as you can see, we got 25 channels and that's actually not bad at all considering I just threw this thing together. There's definitely a lot of room for improvement. Remember, as I said, um, I didn't add the foil back. I kind of messed up on... Uh, some of the areas where the wood had lost its bite um, and I had to actually uh, re-drill a hole um, but as you can see I put the electrical tape on and what I did is I used TV Fool and I essentially pointed um, the antenna in the direction of where the most channels were now mind you I don't live out in the middle of the country I live in the suburbs so I'm not right in the middle of the city, but I'm also not super rural. But 25 channels is actually pretty impressive uh, for something that I just threw together. And uh, as you can see, all the channels are in super, super clear HD. Uh, so I think this was a success for a test, I'd say. And I'm definitely going to go ahead and scale up and build a bigger one and see if I can pull in even more channels because 243 uh, degrees from where I am is pointing towards the towers. I live on the Canadian border, so this is pointing towards the towers uh, of Buffalo. I live on the U.S. side, so I'm actually going to try and change it and point it to Niagara Falls and see if I can pick up Canadian channels. Uh, my plan is actually to build two of these, but have them in 
different directions. You know, maybe keep this one pointed down towards Buffalo and keep one pointed towards Niagara Falls and see if I can pick up both the American and the Canadian towns. It's definitely something to experiment with. And um, I think uh, it's definitely a project to go ahead with. Um, so, you know, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section and I will get back to you. Um, as you can see, it's not even completely level and I'm still getting really good re reception and getting 25 channels. Uh, so that's about it. You know, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope it kind of inspired you to go out and do your own thing and, you know, good luck. Okay, so I just wanted to provide an update just because I knew that people might say, well, you're just in a really good location or, you know, um, just something, you know, there's always something with someone else or it's like, oh, you know, a commercial antenna would have been really better. So I went out and I bought this. <clears throat> I didn't really go out. I went online and I bought this. This is the DB8E Extreme Range Antenna. And this one probably had the best re reviews out of all the antennas that I could find for HD antennas. Uh, so I hooked it up according to all the specifications. And as you can see, it looks pretty elaborate. And you'd figure that it would do a fantastic job. I will tell you, I finished hooking this up, hooked it up to the TV. No matter which way I pointed the antennas, if I pointed it the same way, in opposing directions, and 90 degrees, I got 17 channels with this. And then I figured, you know what, just to keep the naysayers quiet, I would rehook up my old antenna, the one I built for maybe less than $5. Um, just so people can't say, oh, it was the clouds, or it was this, or it was that. So I hooked it up. A minute after, 25 channels again, 25 channels, just scanned it, <clears throat> and I was watching NFL football on CBS with that. This, couldn't even get the local CBS station. I did everything. I tried everything. You know what this comes in at? $136. $136 and couldn't even do half as well. I got 17 channels, so a little better than half as well as the one that I made at home. And this one isn't even perfect. I'm sure people out there can make a way better one. I plan on making another one and making uh, better improvements and making it more precise and adding some sort of foil backing. And I got 25 channels with this one. The other one bound to get something, anything better. <clears throat> so this is going back for sure. Don't waste your money on these commercial antennas because you think, oh, it's built in a factory or, oh, it's from a big name company. It must be great. It's not great. These do worse than the homemade antennas. I can't even believe it. Look at it. This thing's a monster compared to that. Unbelievable. So don't waste your money. Go ahead and build this. <clears throat> and just one more time and give you a look at it in case I didn't explain it again. So you have the hangers and you got the dipoles right there. You have to cross it over, put some electrical tape or just something to stop it from touching, protect it from interference. You go up, 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 up in the middle. You gotta connect your transformer. Up, 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 cross it over one more time electrical tape and then right at the top and honestly this is for UHF if you want to get a VHF what you could do is buy a pair of bunny ears drill a hole in the top there touch the bunny ears down to here and then you'll have VHF I'm fine with UHF uh, I'm gonna try some things see what works maybe I'll provide a second update video but there you go don't waste your money way better